Okay, let's start. Welcome everyone that is joining this live uh, Facebook. Over the last several uh, weeks, 40 day fast, and now this Esther fast, literally tens of thousands around the globe. We don't even, even know where they are. We've got uh, 70,000 who have been joining us for the 40-day fast, the 20th day, and uh, 10,000 have joined us with the Esther fast. But I have an expectancy that actually, uh, they're really all over the globe joining you this, uh, joining this Esther fast. I was on the phone with leaders across the nation yesterday. They're fasting Esther fast in China. They're fasting in Israel. They're fasting all over the globe. And uh, it's, it's, it is an amazing moment. And I believe God, for such a time as this, has, has, has brought you even to this moment, even in this prayer meeting. It is our expectation that something's going to break today. Something is going to shift in the spirit. We may not see the manifestation right away, but I don't want you to come to a good prayer meeting. I want you to come with an expectancy that we are the ecclesia of God. And as we pray together tonight, something is going to shift. Um, Esteban, why don't you show them the, the picture of the globe and explain, explain what's going on? Yes, for sure. We are having a, a, an amazing uptake on this uh, fast. Uh, it's been all over the world. We are so overwhelmed with what God has been doing. Um, we have people from 188 nations registered fasting. We have uh, around 71 registered with us, but many, many more thousands, 71,000, but many, many more from around the world, the, all the nominations and movements that are doing the, the Jesus fast and 19,000 and many more as well doing the, the Esther fast. You can see a little bit here on the map, just to give a, 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 an idea of uh, each of those red dots means that people have joined uh, not just one person, but many sometimes from even Siberia, every, everywhere, everywhere you see a red dot is people where uh, join the fast that are fasting with us worldwide for these, for the Esther fast and for the Jesus fast. It's just amazing what God has been doing and using with this. We give thanks to God. We, we give thanks to God. I, I just want to personally thank those 70,000 who um, uh, have been on this fast, those that have been on the Esther fast. I, I just feel like the Lord would say to you, you're highly esteemed in heaven. You're deeply loved and you're moving heaven in these days with your prayers. You're not alone. You're joining thousands around the world. And so as we begin this time together, I want us to just simply start by worshiping God. You may be in a home all by yourself, one or two, because you've, you've been a, 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 you're under house arrest because of the, of, of the virus. You may be with a handful of people, but can we right now, I want us to begin to, to worship God. And I want you to see right now um, that you are joining and worshiping the one who is being praised this moment in a, in a congregation of myriads of angels, 10,000s around the throne. You're a part of a cosmic prayer meeting. You may seem alone, but you've got to see that the great cloud of witness to the throne of God we are entering into that place by faith. God has ordained the mouth of babes and siblings to ordain praise to silence the foe and the avenger. And so today, I want you to unmute yourself and all of us begin to lift. If you want to stand, bow before the Lord and begin to lift your voices and just begin to worship the Lord of glory. See yourself around that throne right now. Let's begin to magnify him. He's over the flood. The Lord sits as king over the flood. Hallelujah. Pray to God. Magnify your name with God. All nations of the earth, you are the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
Righteous King of Praise, King of Glory, we exalt you. We lift your name over the earth, O oh God. We declare your praises. Others. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we say that you're high and lifted up. You're seated on the throne. You're the darling of heaven. Lord, we lift up our, our worship and our praise, Lord. You said Psalms 22, God, that, that, Lord, you are holy, Lord God, and you are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. And so you said, let praises arise. Let the glory of the Lord be among us. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us this evening in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, yes. Lord, we declare that the earth belongs to you and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. For you founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. And Lord, we declare in Psalms yes. 24, who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Yes. yes. We declare, who is this king of glory? The Lord almighty. You are the king of glory. We say that you're more mighty. You're more powerful than anything your name is above all names, and it's over coronavirus. Yes. There, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Let's just unmute again, and let's just lift our voices. Yes, God. Lift your voices. Yes, hold. Out of the mouth of you. 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 Out of the mouth not like you. Of all names, Jesus. Can we just can we just bow before the Lord wherever you are in your living rooms? Let's just bow on our faces. coming before the very throne of God yes. in a moment of massive, massive international crisis that we have never, ever seen anything like it in our day. But the mighty God sits enthroned above the flood. He's the unchallenged sovereign of the universe. Holy, holy, awesome love you God we love you just there begin to just love him thank you thank you you are the faithful thank you thank you Lord Sure, sure. 
joining us when the angel of death in the book of Exodus was visiting home by home killing the firstborn of Egypt Israelites were commanded to take the blood of a pure lamb sprinkle it on the doorposts of their homes we sense that everyone praying should first of all as we entered into this strategic prayer Plead the blood of Jesus, the covering over our sins, our own lives, your prayer group, your families, spiritual covering and protection from the enemy. Would you just stand wherever you are and just, just begin to plead the blood of Jesus right now? Plead the blood of Jesus. Sprinkle, sprinkle the doorposts of your family's lives, your children's. Just begin to do it. Can you just... Uh, Unmute them and just begin to declare it. Apply it with the confession of your mouth. Come on, brothers and sisters to cross who are joining me that are helping me lead the voices. All those who are associated with us. Feed your blood. Lord, over our families, Lord. Yes, over our children. Lord, we plead the blood. blood over our lives. Blood. Cover. Wash us from our sins. The doorposts, Father God. Hear our prayers, Father God. We thank you that your blood. Cover our communities, our schools. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. Even now, we plead the blood of Jesus over our cities. Lift your voices, brothers and sisters. The blood of Jesus over your sins, the nation, for the nation, those nations represent that blood. For like we have sinned, we have broken covenants. We say the blood of Jesus. We are removed from our first love. We say, Lord, let the blood of Jesus cover us. For everyone on this prayer gathering, all over the world, everyone on this prayer gathering, we pray. A shield of protection over them. That no backlash will come from the enemy. Hallelujah, Lord. Even by the blood that speaks better than any shame. 
Yes. Yes. It speaks better than any, any failure. We come now and we clothe ourselves in the righteousness of God. Oh, brothers and sisters, let's do that together. Clothe yourself with the royal robes of Esther right now on the third day. Come before the king. Clothe yourself. Declare, I am the righteousness of God. I'm son, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Yes, we do. We extend our hand to touch the scepter in that season. Yes, God. Thank you, God. We've been, we've been given dreams all week long. In this all, in these three week in these three weeks, dreams after dreams, that our promised land is the throne room of God. Yeah. Not begging his orphans, but sons and daughters of God who are being called into the very ecclesia as the sons of God. Yes. To rule with him as seated in heavenly places, like Esther, the scepter of favor was raised to order. Right now, would you just see yourself coming into the throne room of God? Myriads of angels, 10,000 access to the very throne and the scepter of favor being shown to you. Step in by the blood of the Lamb. Take your seat by faith with the ecclesia around the world and join in the throne room where God rules over the affairs of the earth. Hallelujah. Once you declare, oh Lord, you rule over the affairs of the earth. Put your voices and declare, God, you rule, you rule over the affairs of the earth. You rule over the affairs of men. All power and principality is under your feet. You are, you are seated in heaven's at the right hand of God. And all the power and was like we were in the be given all authority in Jesus' name. Standing stand with our great advocate and mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. Yes. Like Daniel in Daniel 9, we come before the very courtroom of heaven. And I felt led today to beg God's mercy on our sins as we've already done. But I want to beg that concerning the sins of abortion in the nations of the earth. I don't know if I have that thing from Sheena, but I was on a phone call with major leaders across the world yesterday, and a woman from England, a scientist, a brilliant woman researcher, and a woman of high esteem in the nation, researched what it would what would this look like? What could come in Great Britain? And she researched it and she said it would mean eight million people dying in Great Britain. And then the Lord stirred her, go look at how many abortions have been done in England. She looks it up and it's eight million. What if this thing is dealing with the bloodshed of nations right now? I want us to just begin to plead the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, we got it. Lord, would you shake this thing off the earth? May this virus shake the demonic hell holes of the earth. Come on, lift your voices. I want you to begin to pray. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us. Some of you come and you can pray on this on those microphones. But all over the world, you, it may not be like in America with 60 million babies, 
but your nations are even now being threatened with it, threatened with it in Argentina right now, and other nations. Oh, the demonic powers of, of uh, the demonic powers of Jezebel are coming into the nations. Come on, brothers and sisters, let's plead that blood. Oh God, we cry out for your mercy, mercy, oh God, mercy, oh God. Oh God, we just ask for forgiveness of sins and we cry out for mercy, mercy across the United States of America, mercy over the North America, over the nations of the earth. We cry out for mercy, oh God. Yes. Yes. Give us for innocent bloodshed. Yes. Cry out for mercy. God, we ask for mercy. Mercy, mercy over the blood of the innocents. Mercy over 60 yes. million here in the United States. God, 60 million, 8 million in the UK. Over the millions across the nation, we just cry out for mercy, Jesus. And we're asking if anything during this fire, she would shut down Planned Parenthood as everything else has been shut down. Shut down Planned Parenthood. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Father, we're asking for your mercy. We're coming to you because you are merciful. You are slow to anger. You're abounding in love. And you relent from doing harm when we repent, when we turn to you and come to you. So we're asking for mercy tonight, God. Yes, God. Those around the world, I, you may be alone. The temptation is to disengage. I want you to engage for the next hour. Engage these prayers. What we're going to could shift the world. For such a time as this, we've brought, been brought to this three-day Esther fast. In America, we've been praying a prayer that has literally been going on now since 2004. And it's, Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. God, end abortion. Send revival to America. I want you to say it for your own nation, for your own, for your own nation. Brothers and sisters, can you just lift your voices together and, and just join it together and just join me in this prayer, Jesus. Do it with me, brothers and sisters. Yes. Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. God, and the abortion for the lives of the American the nations. Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and of my nation. God, and the abortion for the lives of the nations. Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. God, and the abortion and the revival to the Hallelujah, God. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. JT, would you like to pray right now? Would you just like to just open your heart up? Just declare and pray right now on this. Father God, we here we are, God, with unclean hands. God, our hands have been unclean. God, our hearts have been unclean. You who see the iniquity of our hearts, God, you who remove the stain of sin, God, I say, have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on our nation, Lord, I'm praying right now. Yes. God, that in this time as we weep between the porch and the altar, God, we look to you, God, and we know that you're faithful. God, you are faithful to forgive us. God, you are faithful, God, to redeem us, Lord. And I'm asking, oh, great Redeemer, Wash us, purge us with hyssop, we pray, God. We ask for a purging of our homes, God, a purging of our houses, Lord. God, we thank you that you are changing the expression, God, even now. And, Lord, you will have for yourself a purified bride, God, a purified people. So, Lord, I'm asking, would you loose the grace of divine repentance, God? Would you loose wave after wave of holiness upon your people even now, God? Lord, we're asking, God, that you would cause, Lord, us to emerge on the other side of this. Healed, God. Healed from not only COVID-19, but, God, healed from ourselves. God, healed from our, our sin sickness, God, from our idolatry. Lord, from our racism, God, from the genocidal uh, uh, realities in the reachings of our heart, Lord. God, I'm asking now, Lord, that you would have for yourself, even now, 
a purified, spotless bride. Lord, as we posture ourselves on the threshing floor of this virus, God, I'm asking now, Lord, that you would walk among us now, that we would feel the fear of the Lord, which is clean. God, your judgments are clean. Lord, the fear of the Lord is clean. So, Lord, I thank you for turning uh, uh, the, the, the unhealthy of fear in the culture into the clean fear of the Lord, even now. Yes. Loose grace for us, we pray in Jesus' name. JT, just just for a moment, could you share your burden that you shared uh, this morning, JT, even about the homes and just real briefly? Absolutely. I, I have felt uh, Malachi 1. I have felt uh, so strongly just the Lord saying, would that there would be one who would shut the doors rather than kindle an offering on my altar in vain. And I feel like we've come into this place where God himself has brought the shut down because he says in that passage in Malachi 1 verse 10, shut the doors. Then the, the famous refrain of Malachi 1:11 is out of every place incense will arise. But he says, I will not accept your offerings because I want a pure offering. It's a, it's a specific type of offering that he wants and it's holiness unto the Lord. And I, be, I believe that God has caused us now to come into uh, this, this moment. I, my prayer this morning was out of Psalm nine uh, that the Lord would, would uh, that he, he, he judges us in righteousness. His judgments are clean, it's in righteousness. And that we're in this moment where God is seeking righteousness at the heart level. He's, he's looking for a cleansing uh, in our nation like never before. And so the, the hand sanitizing is, is just an outward expression of what God is after inwardly. And, he, and he's desperately desiring us to get our houses in order, get our hearts in order, get our houses in order, clean up your basements, clean up. You know, it's this secret thing, these secret places, clean up your closets, your, your, your storage houses, your storerooms, because in the house, you know, if we're, if we're relegated to the house, God is, is coming. The spirit of God is on us to clean out the house. And so I've, I've been discerning and praying through even a national online solemn assembly, uh, possibly even Wednesday, because we've never come into a place of lament and mourning as a nation and once again it's the it's the hour not even for a joel 2 solemn assembly but for a nehemiah 9 solemn assembly where they gather and they read the word they remember and then they confess and then they worship and so this has been my burden in my prayer thank you thank you jt i think one of the things is a, 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 a man said this there we have no temple now to worship God, we can only be in our houses. I think God's wanting us all to turn back to prayer. And our houses become houses of prayer. And we become houses of prayer individuals. And this, this brother said, on the road to Emmaus, Jesus appeared to two guys, he went to their house. And he appeared to them in an unexpected way with the breaking of the bread. And I feel I'm just burdened that we return to prayer in our homes and rebuild the altars again. And our little children will see the altars that their fathers are building. And they'll grow up with the word of God and they'll grow up with the dimension that around the table, Jesus will appear to them and come to them. So I, I pray for family revival. Lift your voices together for family revivals right now that the Lord will visit our families' homes.
for something that there was no glory in. Lord, I'm asking for the nations, even as we pray now, a mighty returning to the devotion of our youth. Lord, let it come in Jesus' name. We're going to go back into prayer in a while, but I've just led you, led you now to a season of preparation. Now, if you will, if you'll pay close attention to what I feel God has spoken to me, you got to understand I've just been groaning for weeks concerning the judgments of God. And, uh, and then I'm and concerning the demonic as well and crying out to God. I don't just want to stick to the understandings and doctrines. I, I want to, I want a now word. I want an understanding word of what we must do at this hour. And I've been groaning. It's been a, a real difficult time, but glorious because I'm meeting God on this fast. And, um, uh, I received a phone call from Andy Bird. You may, may have seen that in the devotional, the leader of the Send. Um, literally 55,000 Brazilians have joined us in the 40-day fast. Brazilians are leading the parade of history at this moment. And, uh, and a man named Jean-Luc, a great evangelist that's lying in bed right now, we don't think he has coronavirus, but pneumonia. And he called me up so sick. And he said, Lou, don't miss your moment. God has given you a platform to speak to the world. He said, call a fast and take authority over this coronavirus because it's hindering it's going to hinder the movement of evangelism and missions. We knew that 2020, we've known this for a long time, that 2020 would be the year of the greatest sending movement, stadium Christianity, all over the world, stadiums. I think maybe 20 even were in America prepared. The, the send Argentina has already been shut down. And um, there's this, and when he said it, my spirit jumped. Because I know Go 2020 is in May, where they're calling for 100 million believers to go and evangelize. And they call this 40-day fast as the preparation for that invasion. They're believing for a billion souls to be saved. All of these movements are taking place, and now it's all been shut down. Something, missionaries are being pulled from the field. My own family can't go to the mission field. Uh, an incredible movement called, called Oikos, Every Home for Christ, with a vision of going to every home in the world for the next 20 years, in the next 20 years. This thing is, is stopping something. And when he said that, it exploded in my spirit because a shift came into my heart when the call ended and I moved toward the, a calling in my life to mobilize an Ekbalo prayer that millions would be praying, Lord, the harvest hurl for laborers into the harvest field. I've come under a commission, and I'm burdened that it, the commission go forward. And I sense this thing. This thing's going to stop. It's seeking to stop the evangelistic movement. And then right before I begin to write down the devotionals that I've done for the last three days, Andy Bird called me and said, Lou, you have a platform. Would you please consider calling a worldwide fast because it's seeking to shut down this whole movement of evangelism and missions. YWAM bases are shut down across the world. Folks, something is going on here that's just beyond the normal. And so I began to, uh, uh, I begin to write this out and I set out a word. And then I'm talking with brothers and sisters and great leaders. And my brothers and sisters have said, this, these are the judgments of God. God is dealing with the earth. He's breaking their idols. He's, he's bringing the church to repentance. 
He's changing the expression of Christianity in one moment of time, possibly. Things are going to be, they're going to be different from this time forward. This is way beyond 911. And, uh, and uh, I was wrestling. I said, because I see it. I see that's truth. And I find myself wrestling between two great challenges in my mind and heart. And over these weeks, I've been crying out to God. And last night, I wrestled with God. I couldn't sleep. Finally, I fell asleep. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me because I had come to the conclusion that whether it's the judgments of God and God's hurling this thing or whether the Lord, and I actually believe this, made a decision in heaven that the earth was going crazy and it needed to be restrained, that he lifted up his hand off. He lifted his, made a decision, lifted his hand off the earth and, as, and an emissary from Satan was unleashed to release death, destruction. And God has allowed it to go forward. This is where I've come out. You can come out differently. But to me, I, I'm going to share now what God exploded in my, in, in my heart. And uh, I wrote it down. So last night wrestling this, I was wakened by a dream. Dream, whatever it was. I wakened in a moment, and you know what it is when you're wakened by God in the morning. It was everything was like crystal clear. I, it was like I stepped into a moment of light, and the still small voice of God whispered into my heart, Isaiah 53, the crucified Christ, the Lamb of God, who suffered to bear our sins. And I realized he was saying, Jesus Christ at the cross has destroyed the works of the devil. It's all him. But that wasn't the only thing he said to me. As I begin going through that passage, and folks, I'm being a little vulnerable here, and you may think that I'm boasting, but I understand. I've, I've understood the ways of God. There's something about praying through. 20 days of water, and on the third day of no food, no water. I read this in verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. When you make your soul and his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And he shall see the labor, the agony of his soul, and be satisfied. And when I read that this morning, the Holy Spirit spoke. I just began weeping. He said, Lou, I've seen the agony of your soul. And I have given you now a breakthrough for authority. Esther fasted three days and stepped into a realm of authority. Jonah was three days in the belly of the well and stepped in to his destiny and calling. And Jesus was in Sheol for three days and stepped out in the, in the ascension to Christ and everything changed. And the Lord spoke to my heart, I've given you authority over this virus. Now, I don't know what all that means, but I begin to weep. Please just hear me out on this. I had an encounter with the Lord. Like the, and I, 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 I'm just saying, something happened and a gift of faith exploded in my heart. I turned over to my side of my bed and there was my phone. I opened it up and there was a scripture. And there was a scripture sent to me from Jean Luc in Europe. Where's that scripture? It says, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. And another translation says, I will cut short, I will, I will cut it short for the sake of the elect. I had been actually praying that very thing. Cut this thing short. Don't let it go on for two, three, four months and stop the move of evangelism. And I felt an explosion again went into my heart. And he says, Lou, I've allowed this to take place or I've released it 
to bring the church to repentance and the world to a place where the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. This was his plan to prepare the world so that, so that we could move into a new era in this 2020 for a fresh explosion of evangelism and missions. My heart began to jump. Chuck Pierce prophesied that before the, that in 2019, that a, a plague would break out and we would feel it, feel it through Passover. Well, another prophet had three dreams that this thing would go to, to Passover. It would be diminished, mitigated in Passover. And uh, my heart's been jumping that we, who could have guessed this 40-day fast would be planned, that it would end literally on April 9th, Passover day. I believe that God is saying my blood can stop this thing. The application of my blood can stop this thing. And with that word, it will be cut short. I felt like the Lord was saying to me, he said, Lou, don't be passive concerning and just say, let God stop it when he wills. I felt the Lord say, I've given you permission to come up with me and give and take authority and agree with what I'm agreeing, that I want to loose an evangelism missions movement. And I want you to agree with me that this thing will be shortened. This is what I want to do tonight. I don't know if you agree with me. I don't know what your thoughts are, but faith has exploded. Tonight, I, I want us to take our stand and declare this thing is going to abate. And I want to believe, and from this point on, it's like that Reese House company, a gift of faith was put in my heart. I am not going to be asking God to abate this thing afterwards. I am going to take my stand of faith and declare this thing is, is ending because there's coming a major release of worldwide evangelism, it must happen. And this is the year for it to happen. I went back to sleep and I'll end it here a little long. I went back to sleep and I was with the Oikos, every home for Christ team, the every creature commission of Reese House, and every creature would have the gospel preached to them. And in this dream, I was declaring the mighty breakthroughs that had just come through with every home for Christ and Oikos. In the dream, my son Jesse came and sat next to me, put his arm around me, and I put my head in his shoulder and began weeping. I knew the Lord was saying, there's your sign, Lou. Great breakthroughs for evangelism worldwide. That's coming because you're going to break through and, re and restrain this virus. I wish I could hear you all. I don't know what you think about this, but I am going to go to prayer right now. I'm going to take my stand. And with those who want to take their stand with me, would you take your stand with me? And let's stand all across the globe in your homes in your houses and declare to this plague you are restrained your days are numbered and your days are shortened if you can stand with me on this and agree with me if, if you can't, it's okay. We're all trying to, he would see through a glass darkly. But I know what happened to my heart last night. I've seen it happen before when I knew that breakthroughs took place. But for those who, who can stand with me and believe with me, would you stand and just give a roar to God? Would you get up on your microphones and begin to roar? Come on. Let's just do yes, it. God. Yes, 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 God. Yes,
Send forth your way of your word with truth, God. I'm asking for sending force in the name of Jesus. God, we're, we're just saying the harvest is ready. God, I'm asking yes. for extension of the harvest season of the Lord. Yes. Brothers and sisters, what came into my heart was something that came to me some years ago concerning Reese Howells and the Every Creature Commission. And uh, they made a commitment that they would give their whole lives, that every creature on earth would get their gospel preached to them. And Reese Howells said the college became a house of prayer for all nations. And then we, then in that very chapter, it says, one form that this prayer warfare took place took was intercession on a national and international level concerning anything that affected world evangelization. Every creature must hear, therefore, the doors must be open. Their prayers became strategic. They must face and fight the enemy wherever he was opposing freedom to evangelize. And I felt like the Lord speak to me. I am not rebuking what God is doing through this storm. I am rebuking a spirit that would try to keep driving this thing beyond its boundaries. When Job, when, the, when Satan came against Job and said, I, I, let me just take his family and he'll curse you. And the Lord said, let him do it. And then he said, well, if he doesn't, then, then let me take his own body. Let me put boils on his own body and I'll surely curse you. The Satan is always, always trying to take further. And I felt like the Lord said, this spirit, however it's working in this storm, wants to take its boundaries far beyond that which God wants it. But God says, I will not limit it until you agree with me to limit it. Let repentance have its perfect work. But God, limit this thing and have mercy. And then open the gates for an evangelism worldwide. I hope you hear my heart. Therefore, I'm leading us now into a, sea, a, a time of declarations. Declarations or prayers. 
Are you with me? You can unmute him. Yeah. Yes. 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 We're with yes. you. We're, we're, we're with you. Yes. Thank you so much, you guys. I, I want you to have a sense right now that what we do now could literally shift history. I'm not into prayer to have good prayers. I believe we're called to, to rule with him, to stand in his throne room and stretch out his rod out of it, Zion and rule in the midst of his enemies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me go to this. Here we want to make sure that we are not railing against principalities and powers and shouting arrogantly and presumptuously at them. That is unbiblical and dangerous. We want to make biblical statements, decrees, and commands with the authority of God's word behind them. We will begin by seeing ourselves clothed in righteousness of Christ as we already have. And before each decree we're declaring, we stand in the victory of the cross and his authority, not ours. That's right. We understand this. We're not shouting at the devil. We're standing in the victory of the cross. Wow. Isaiah 53. When the storm arose on the Sea of Galilee to keep Jesus from crossing over to release the garrison demoniac, Jesus rebuked the storm and said, peace be still. Brothers and sisters around the world, now let's stand and release that decree. And I wanted to do it in a rumble. Just begin. Just declare it. That thing in the name of Jesus. First of all, right now, we proclaim we stand in the victory of Jesus Christ alone and in his authority. And yes. in that faith, we speak the shadow of us. the Almighty. And we say, Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. By the word. Peace be still. Let the voice of everywhere stand. Let's all stand and begin to declare that. And I want you to see that thing begin to vibrate and pull the peace from the Coronavirus in the victory of the cross. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, who has authority over yeah. heaven and earth. However you say it, let's just yeah, begin to say that right now. We resist the devil. Yes, in the name and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we resist the coronavirus in the name of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Resist it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold the cross. As Moses held the cross up with the serpent on the cross, right now we hold up the cross. And right now we release light and the blood of the cross over this nation, the nation of the earth. The angel of death was slain. So 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 Come on. 
Brothers and sisters, when a black plague broke out and an angel of death was slain thousands because of David's sin, God spoke to that angel, enough, restrain your hand. It is so interesting to me that before even David even repented and built an altar, God was already so moved with mercy. He spoke to that angel, enough, restrain your hand. Oh, I think that's just God. Oh, we must come as priests with the incense between the poor, between the living and the dead, and that's being done all over the world. But I believe the Lord is saying, and we must say with him, enough, restrain your hand. Brothers and sisters, in your prayers, begin to declare this very decree of faith, enough coronavirus, restrain your hand, unmute, and let's begin to declare this word, enough, enough coronavirus. Enough coronavirus. Go back to your board. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Speak life to life. This far and no further. Restrain your hand by the blood of the Lamb. The word of their testimony. Not a, we testify now. Enough is enough. We declare and decree now. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We thank you for the bloodline. And we just say no more. The bloodline over the atmospheres of the earth. I am in the name of Jesus. No more. We say no more to coronavirus. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for the bloodline. In the name of Jesus. Yes. We agree. Father, we say enough, Lord, plaguing our elderly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Enough is enough that you will not be a plague to the vulnerable, those who have vulnerable yeah. in their health systems. We declare enough is enough. We say that it is, we call it ending to this plague, that your fear will no longer work. We say that it will no longer bear yep. fruit in the name of Jesus. You will not yeah. plague the, the school communities. You will not plague, Lord yeah. God, yeah. any neighborhoods. You will not plague. You will no longer be a plague. You are yeah. a defeated foe in the name of Jesus. We are the yes. refugees, and we command yeah. it to end tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, defender of the weak, defender of the orphan, defender of the widow. Oh God, would you defend even the elderly? That no more, no more, this thing would be saved, stopped in Jesus' name. JT, JT, can you share your dream last night? David, who? David Kim, share your dream. I have a dream uh, at the beginning of the Esther fast. Close, get it closer uh, so we can hear you. Am I unmuted? No, but get yeah. closer, louder. Okay. I had a dream at the beginning of the Esther fast. And uh, in the dream, I was with JT in a prayer meeting with maybe two to 300 people. Uh, and Mike Bickle was there. He wasn't saying anything, but I believe he was lending his faith and his authority for the moment. And in the dream, uh, JT grabbed the mic and he said, it's time to release the angel named the obliterator. And in the dream, the room didn't respond, uh, but I knew that JT was right and that he had the authority to release that angel named obliterator. Uh, and, uh, uh, but the faith in the room had to catch up to the need of the moment. And I knew that once the faith in the room had caught up to the need of the moment, what JT had prayed was right and true. And this angel named Obliterator would go forth 
and the breakthrough would come over this coronavirus. JT, can you get on if you're still there? I, I'm here. Had you heard that dream, JT? I had not heard it until just uh, moments before I joined this call. It's so encouraging to me. I, I do feel, I just feel such a um, a burden on on the issue of righteousness righteousness exalts a nation and i feel i feel that while we're we're a company and there's people joining us around the world joined in this moment i still believe that there is a there is a there is a response there is a widespread uh response in righteousness that god is after at a heart level across our nation i don't know how to mobilize it i don't know how it's going to happen but I feel that we can enter into that dream in that moment after I've issued or we have issued this, this widespread invitation to, to, to righteousness and holiness like never before. And so uh, this is a profound confirmation to me, though, that I do believe that God is going to turn this thing the moment we enter into travail. Yes, I, I think there's a lot of things that need to go into this, uh, the proverbial stew. But it is my conviction that I call this prayer meeting because there is a company that at least at this point have the faith that this virus, even today, can be limited in its scope. Yes. And that is the faith that I'm going to move with. Father, I just want to thank you. I believe that, God, there's a preparation for a, a divine obliteration. I believe in the dream. It's true that the people's faith must come to a major, a major joining together with the preparations that are going on. I pray for JT that whatever this burden, his weeping, his groanings would produce something that creates a mass swell of righteousness in the nation. We agree with that. So we wait for that word, for we wait for that word to be put, uh, to be brought forth in the name of Jesus. My calling is to be, simply be obedient to what God has given to me and the faithfulness to the sphere that God has brought into this fast with thousands of fasts, the Lord showed me last night something happened and I broke into a realm of faith. I actually believe I received a victory over some major spiritual thing and wanted to keep me below. And so I'm going to go, go on. Stick with me. We have another 20 or so minutes. Now, this is what I want to do. Finally, Jesus said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I believe there's many understandings of that word, that heaven binds it first, and then we, we must bind it. But I think sometimes God waits for us to take the initiative to bind and agree with what he's saying in the spirit. And so today I want to simply do this as the corporate ecclesia around the globe, covered in the blood of Jesus and clothed in his authority, we bind this plague and command it to abate and bow at the feet of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Yes. So, Lord, now unmute everybody, and, and Lord, I pray right now we declare corporate ecclesia around the globe covered by your blood. Yes, yes we do. Authority in the victory of the cross, not in our boasting, but yours alone. We bind this plague. 
Command it now to obey. Yes. Command it to obey. Jesus name. But I'm asking for it. Right now. now. The virus is at your feet. Do it. Do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, would you just lift your hands? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We step into your finished work. We partner with you now, God. We partner with what you said and what you love, God. Lord, I step in by faith into that dream right now, God, knowing that my faith will catch up later, God. But I have faith that you've done it on the cross, God. That you have finished the work, God. You have disarmed powers and principalities, God. God. You have wrought victory by your own blood, God. You've cleansed us, God. You've given us the transplant, God. We are no longer slaves, God. We're no longer human, God. You've you've made us more than that, God. And I thank you now So we join in faith, God. And we do. We lose the obliterator in Jesus' name, God. We lose by the power of the Spirit, the blood of the Lamb, the victory of the cross, God. You would obliterate. Yeah. With the vaccine yeah. of heaven, the very blood of Jesus, yeah. COVID 19 in Jesus' name, loose healing waves all across yes, this God. globe, even yeah. now, Lord, yeah. from sea to yeah. side, yeah. sea, God. Lord, from coast to coast, all Thank open and nations, God. We pray for waves of glory to be released right now, yes. the power yes. of your own right hand. Again, God, do it again, Lord. We pray. Yes. Brothers and sisters, again, I believe we've taken a stand. Yes. Matt Lockett has talked about Reese House companies, and his documentary is going to come out. I just know that something happened to me and our little company here today. That faith, this coronavirus, will not go beyond its boundaries. Yes, yes. And he will shorten because of the elect. Yeah. yeah. Which I believe election. He will shorten it for yes. the sake of a massive explosion of evangelism. Every creature you miss. Yes. This sand. One day, L.A., Lord, the massive... Massive stadiums, promise keepers, Lord, the, the great gatherings, sin, sin changes. Lord, the, the missions movement, God wants to open this thing up by restraining this virus yes. so that by, the, by, by June, by July, the doors are open. And so I want to I, I feel the Lord says, now we must, for those who have entered into this, take a stand of faith. And do not, do not look at the waves. Do not look at the media. Yes. Don't look at the spread of the virus. I want you to take a stand on your faith declarations today. God. I want you. I want us to take a stand, even through Passover, and declare the very word of the Lord over and over and over again. This, this scripture. This scripture that was given to me early in the morning, sent from Europe. The Lord, I will shorten the time. It's time for the sake of the elect. 
I'm standing on this is my word of faith. Stand with me on that word of faith. So as you just declare that Lord, we take a stand of faith right now. We refuse to look at the waves. We lift our eyes to Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We look at the news. We look at the media. Lord, we look at them right now. The Lord who is enthroned over the storm. Every house for a new day. Every creature in the name of Jesus. We take up his commission again. In Jesus' name, Lord, pearl for laborers in the hearts of your brothers and sisters. Yes, we're going to go right now. We're going to open this thing up. We stand in faith. We're going to go into prayer. I want you right away to begin to pray. Lift up your hands, all you gates. I want you to open up the doors of nations missionaries to go i want to, i want you to command the gates to be open i want you to command highways of evangelism the stadiums to open everybody stand if matt you want to lead us in anything just get on that microphone you want to lead us and then we'll pray it's up to you yeah um I, you you're already talking about the the 20 large gatherings and, and I just, I had this, I just got off of another call and I, I, I felt like this thought came to me that th these large gatherings, they were absolutely the heart of God. And too many leaders heard the same thing that 2020 is to be a catalytic year for revival. But it's, it's amazing to me that God has put the whole globe on pause so that we could not go into the the, the the stadium without the stillness that he's he's giving us a window right now to to rediscover the stillness before him so that we can go into the stadium rightly so father we we pray right now lord 20 gatherings in 2020 god we say that revival in america is not canceled let entertainment be canceled. Let, let, let the workplace be canceled. Let the restaurants and the bars and, and the strip clubs be canceled. But we say revival in America is not canceled in the name of Jesus. God, give us give us the revival in our families, God. Give us revival around the table. Revival in our neighborhoods, God. Revival with our neighbors. And God, give us the stillness before you and the groan that is needed so that we can go into the stadiums rightly. God, we cry out for our friends right now for every one of these gatherings. Yes. Planned, Lord, the time, the energy, and the treasure that has been sown into these you know, the planning of these gatherings, God. God, we pray, let not one ounce of it be canceled in the name of Jesus. But God, let it be actually magnified and multiplied in its magnitude. That God, revival in America is not canceled in Jesus' name. So we're trusting. I had, I had my blood clot for two weeks. I was held up in Argentina, life-threatening blood clots. And the Lord spoke to me. I'm not just having you get your body restored. I want to restore your soul. He spoke to me. I will make you lie down in green pastures. I'll restore your soul. And I felt like the Lord said, Luke, for the next several months, don't even go do public ministry. Just be still and seek me. That's what this fast is. I'm holed up in a house in New England for 40 days. And I'm finding restoration of my soul. Rick Joyner said it today. The Lord's word today is, he leadeth me beside still waters. He, uh, uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. These days, brothers and sisters, use these times to seek God, get alone with God. We've been forced and pressured into this. Let's do this. But then I want us to declare the open gates. I want you to lift yes. up your ear, lift up your hands, your voices everywhere, and begin to roar. Lift up your gates. Open the doors of evangelism that no one could shut. Everybody. Yes, yes. God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. The gates open, Lord. Yes, the gates open. Yes, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shut up the gates. Open. 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 Open.
I want you to pray for President Trump. Wisdom from above. Yes. God would break the division to bring us together out of all this. And God give wisdom to Vice President Pence. Yes. Of the program that are seeking to intercept this thing. Brothers and sisters, let's pray. Pray for them, not curse them. Let's pray. Father, we pray for our president. Pray, God, for my Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, take the fury out of this thing in Jesus' name. Father, yes. we thank you. We thank you, Father, for alliances yes. between every party in our government. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, yes, Father, God. for working together as never before. We thank you, Father, for a laying aside of differences and partisanships in the name of Jesus and a working together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for unity, unity in our nation, unity in our government in Jesus name. Yes. Father, we pray for President Trump right now. Yes. Lord, we pray that we speak strength to his very soul. Father, I pray that Lord God, you would give him supernatural courage. Praise. That you would continue to give yes. him his face like flint. Father, even as you had spoken to me through a dream, that, Lord, he goes by what his gut is. And in the dream, Lord God, his gut is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would continue to give him a supernatural yes. gut of the Holy Spirit uh, to make decisions, to do things that are not popular, to do things that are not what the trend wants him to do. And so, Father, we pray a hedge of protection. Lord, we curse curses. We, we pray yes. everything spoken in secret. We curse it. We curse things that are spoken to the stars against them, spoken to the sky, spoken in secret, spoken in public. We, Lord God, we release a hedge of protection over our president in the name of yes. the Lord. Lord Jesus, that Lord, you would continue to preserve him, to give him wisdom, to give him, Lord God, wisdom, even what it would seem to appear to be unwise, but that Lord, it would be wise according to Lord God, what you have ordered him to do. So God, we stand in agreement right now, Lord God, that he would be strengthened, his family would be strengthened, his, his wife, his kids, and Lord, all of his Friends, I pray that you would send them friends, yeah. Lord God, yeah. prophetic yeah. friends, messengers, Lord, yeah. who don't have an agenda, but only the agenda of heaven, who would talk to them about his life, his family, not even about politics, God, that would restore his soul, that it would be like drinking water. And I thank you that, Lord, you are raising up more and more, Lord God, friends, Lord God, that would give him the word of the Lord as friends before God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yes. Brothers and sisters, we're coming to the end of this call. I want to thank you so much, so much for joining us. And I feel like we got all the J Hops and the Apollo crews together. And it's, it's, it's great to be together. I want to let you know we feel like the Lord is saying, Lou, keep, keep going. We felt like the Lord said to us, oh, I, I want you to hold as far and wide as you can on April 9th, which is uh, uh, Passover, that we would come together and take the blood and body of Jesus. For years we've had dreams that God had given us faith for the great communion revival. I'd like us to come together again I don't know how many thousands are on this. I, I want to thank all the people from the nations of the earth that have joined us. What if we came together, we took the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, pass over us. May this be the, the, the moment, the point where this virus is stopped because of the blood of the, 
in the blood of Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm complete in faith today that it is now diminished. It is going to be shortened. And I believe on that, on Passover weekend, which was Chuck Pierce, the amazing prophet said, we will feel the effects of this thing through, through, um, uh, through, through, through Passover. And so let's stay in touch. Now we have 20 more days. At this point, I feel a breakthrough in my heart. And I'm going to pray for the next 20 days. Luke 4, 18. The scroll of Jesus to be enrolled. Signs and wonders. Complete deliverance. I'm praying, Lord, the harvest to follow laborers. Yeah. I, I'm praying yes. for 100,000 LGBT to be saved. Transformed. I'm praying for New England, a great third great awakening. I, I want us to not stop right here. In fact, let's just press on more and more. Get a lot of time with Jesus. Dwell in his love. And then just pray these things through till April 9th. Who would have guessed that for such a <laughs> like Esther, we've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. I love you guys. <laughs> love you, Lou. Love you, Lou. Love you, Lou. Love you, Lou. Love you guys. The Lord protects you, keep you, be a shield about you and your children. May you walk in the light of the children. <laughs> give you peace. All those around the world, the beautiful people that are joining this fast. The Lord give you the grace of fasting in 21 days, really 21 days. Like Daniel, dare to believe for a breakthrough for your families, your friends for your nations. Pray for your own presidents out there as well. God bless you. Good night, everybody. Feel the dreams.